the procedure is very, very straightforward. I always just come to the back of the animal and I come about a third of the way down. That way I can count the ribs without catching that extra rib if they happen to have one. Boy, you did get me a fat one, didn't you? <laughs> and the more obese they are, the more difficult it is as far as being able to count your ribs. Okay, there's the third rib space. You're going to come a third of the way down the back, so about right here, I'm going to clip about a four inch wide square right at that space. Okay. First rib, second rib. Oh. It's not going to hurt him to lose a bit of extra hair, make it a little bit wider open and easier to see. Let's do a quick betadine scrub. I'll actually go down into the muscles between the ribs and deposit about a cc. And then as I pull the needle out, I'll leave myself a bleb under the skin. And that's exactly where I want to go with the scalpel blade. I'll give it a couple of minutes to numb. Right here, because you've got the point that you stuck the needle in, you'll have just a trickle of blood there. When you get ready to go in, just a straight punch through the skin, that's all it takes. That leaves you a very, very small hole. In the skin that you don't have to close. There's no suturing, nothing that you have to do at that point. The biopsy needle has a notch in it, which is where your biopsy is going to actually come from. When you're going into the animal, you want the stylus slid all the way back. That way you've got a full solid needle pushing through the intercostal muscles and down into the liver. Once you get into the liver, then you push the stylus forward, which opens up your notch. I generally wiggle the needle a little bit to get the liver to kind of settle down into that notch. Then you want to hold the stylus itself solid, and you actually advance the outer sleeve by pushing it forward towards the animal. That has a cutting surface on this outside sleeve. So as you push it forward, it cuts the liver down into that notch. Then when you pull it out and open it up, you've got a piece of liver setting in that notch. Did everybody see that? Okay. When you actually do the biopsy, you'll come in. I actually will touch both sides of the ribs because I want to go halfway between the two ribs. I'll actually aim it about 15 degrees down and 15 degrees forward and just push into the intercostal muscles. I actually will feel a little bit of resistance as it goes into the liver. And then I just push the stylus forward. And when I come out, I've got a piece of liver. <clears throat> It is a very small piece of liver. You can actually reach down and grab this biopsy. And it comes up. That's not very much liver. I can do a mineral profile on two of these true cuts, which gives me about 30 to 40 milligrams of liver tissue is all I get. But I can do the full mineral profile on two to three of those very small pieces of liver. I generally ask that everybody tries to get me two true cuts. I, I don't need to do any further prep. Everything is still clean. Everything is still sterile. I have touched nothing with the needle that wasn't sterile. 
So I'll just come right back to the same spot, come right back between the ribs. Since I know that this animal's liver is in that position, because I got a good biopsy the first time, I just I remember how I went in the first time. It is a very, very simple procedure. As soon as I have finished with that biopsy, then I will come back over to my tray. I'll rinse my forceps. I'll put my biopsy needle into the tray, rinse it back and forth, both closed and opened. At that time, I'll take my scalpel and put it into the alcohol because then I'm ready to drop this animal out of the chute and load the next animal. Every once in a while, they will do exactly as he's doing and decide to lay down in the front end. If they do, or if you attempt to do the biopsy on an animal that's laying lateral, you will have trouble. The positioning of the liver because of the rumen because of the rumen and the fill of the rumen will actually shift. Depending upon how much gas is in the rumen, when they lay down like that, it may pull the rumen back if there's a lot of gas, in which case the liver will drop a little bit. If there's not a lot of fill, then as they drop down like that, then the weight of the rumen actually pushes forward and actually pushes the liver up and out of the way even more. And so because the rumen positioning is key in the positioning of the liver, you want the animal standing as square as possible. So if you have animals that keep laying down on you, it's unless you have to test that specific animal, it's better to go to a different animal than to try to do it. I've done enough of them at this point. If I have an animal that lays down on me, I very commonly will go ahead and do the biopsy. And 90% of the time, I'm able to do it without any complications. But every once in a while, if it shifts the position of the liver enough, I don't like going in and probing just to see if I can find the liver. Because then you have the potential of cutting vasculature. You have the potential of cutting into the uh, intestinal tract or into the rumen and you know why add the additional stress and additional risk to the patient do not attempt it on the left side because the rumen pushes the, the liver to the right if you attempt to go in on the left side if you get a liver biopsy you'll be extremely lucky because if you've ever looked at the animals open them up on a post-mortem the liver very rarely will cross midline to the left side. It's almost always from midline over on the right side. And it also has that cup in the side of the liver where the rumen's pushing on it. And so you're shooting at a target that not only doesn't cross midline, so you're going to be at the very end of your needle, you're shooting at a target that may be this wide. Where the liver on this side, you're shooting at a target that may have that kind of a size to it. So it, it would be very difficult and very risky doing a biopsy on the left side.